Hi guys, welcome back. So this is um, the third video in this series that I'm recording at the moment about using R, the R programming language, to uh, analyze data and to conduct data science tasks. Uh, so in the previous video, I kind of talked about how to get set up with R uh, and using R Studio, how to install and load packages. And what I'm going to do in this video and the next couple of videos is just talk about data types in R and kind of um, I'm not going to I'm not going to import any data sets yet. We'll come on to that and we'll, we'll come on to cleaning and tidy in later videos. But what we'll do in this one is kind of work with some built in data sets and just uh, play around with uh, how you can change variable data, the data types that variables are saved as should you need to. OK, so as you can see, I've currently got I've got our studio open. If you look in this top right hand corner where my where my little hand is, you can see I've got our project is shown as none. So I've not got any projects open at the moment. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is open the project that I created a couple of videos ago. So I'm going to so go file open project. And it'll invite me to find that. Which one is it? I think it's in here. And there we go. I, I think I, I gave it this generic name. Our data wrangling uh, was the name of. So if I click on that, that should open. Um, it should open the workspace as it was saved the last time I was working with it. So probably open with a script uh, showing the script that I'm going to work with or, or that I'm going to run in this particular video. And yeah, there we go. Perfect. You can see so in the top in the top left hand corner here we've got this we've got this R script open. I've called it R basics three uh, data types. So uh, it's the third video when we're talking about data types. Uh, and then you we've obviously got the command line interfa interface in this bottom left window underneath that with the usual kind of boilerplate information to start with above it. So what I'm going to do is I've already so I didn't want to live code this because. That'd be boring for you guys watching me make mistakes. Um, so what I thought I would do is just um, uh, I've already typed, created a script with the the few commands we're going to run in this in this video, the things I'm going to cover in this video. Um, so we'll just run these in turn. Um, as you can see at the moment, there's nothing in this environment up here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do though is load uh, load the package tidyverse. So I think I talked about importing that so in I, I installed that in a previous video um, that's a really useful package within R it's got lots of different uh, modules and functions for cleaning and tidying data and also it contains ggplot which is a, re a really good uh, library for plotting data so those are the sorts of data science things that we're going to cover in this series of videos sort of how to tidy data, how to clean it, how to munge it, and also how to visualize data and explore it. And then later on, we'll move on to some of the other stuff such as statistical analyses and stuff. But to, to load that, I've already got Tidyverse installed. You'd be able to see it in this window down here where I've got packages if I scroll down. You can see right here. Tidyverse is there. It's not going to tick next to it because it's not currently loaded. And once I run this command here, where it's got library and then the name of the package in parentheses afterwards. So if I if I select Control Enter and run that, if you look down below in the command window, um, you can see the the command I just ran is is printed below, and there is no cat flashing cursor at the moment because it's still running that command. At present, if I let me make that a little bit bigger, if I scroll up a bit, um, what's going to happen is, oh, there we go. It's actually taking, it's actually taking place now. So it's loading the different packages that are part of this this tidyverse, this larger tidyverse package, and you can see it's it's got ticked next to the ones that it's loaded. It's loaded ggplot, plier, things like that, tibble, which is a, a, a kind of very simplified data frame in R. But you've got some conflicts messages underneath and it's saying dplyr uh, filter, so the filter command masks stats filter. So what it's telling us is there's kind of some masking going on um, because I've loaded a package that has, that has functions within it or methods within it 
that have the same as name as methods in other packages as well. So filter is obviously a method uh, within dplyr and also within stats package. So if I was to use either of those two commands, I'd have to. It's pretty. It, it makes sense that I kind of use this this particular syntax here to make it clear which of the packages that I am I am using filter from. So that's all that means essentially. Um, but that's loaded. The tidyverse is loaded, and I'm not going to start importing data sets yet. We'll come on to that in importing data sets from CSV files and other types of files. Uh, but if I run this command here, if you look at line six in my script, data and then some parentheses, that's going to show the built-in data sets that are available, and it'll it will do so. There we go. Uh, it's opened the new pop-up window next to my script in the screen in the box on the top left. Let me just make that a bit bigger so you can see. If I now scroll down, you can see these are all the built-in data sets that come uh, with our, or, or some of them, a number of them. I'm going to use this one here, Star Wars, because I like Star Wars, and it's also quite a useful one for what I'm going to demonstrate today. So without having to load data sets, to practice using uh, your data science techniques um, to develop your skills, to analyze data there are already existing you know quite some quite significant existing data sets that you can draw on i'm just going to leave that as it is and go back to um my r script here so what i am going to do is uh i'm going to run this command called view and then i've put the name of the data set star wars in parentheses afterwards so what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to create another pop-up window here and it's going to show us what that data set looks like in tabular form, kind of like a spreadsheet sort of form. So you can see we've got a number of variables. Um, we've got like 14 columns, so 14 variables. And then we've got 87 rows, so 87 different observations or characters, essentially, from the Star Wars films. And you can see we've got a number. The reason I chose this one is, um, aside from like in Star Wars, you can see we've got a number of different types of variables. Some of them are numeric, some of them are dec uh, kind of rounded numbers, integers, some of them are decimals, and some of them have missing data. They've got these NAs, and, and a number of them are textual data, so they're characters or strings, character variables is what they're called in R. Okay, so that's what it kind of looks like. Another way we could have looked at that, or a way we can get a little data summary of the different variables and the different levels within e within each of our variables for Star Wars. We could use this command called glimpse. So if I do glimpse and then Star Wars, what you will see in, let me make my command line output window bigger. You can see down below, you can see where I've run the command and then this is what the glimpse, um, the, the glimpse function gives us. It gives us the net, it gives us our variable names, the data type of our variable there, you can see in this column, sorry, let me just, character, int, double, character, character, and it's got list as well. I'm going to talk about characters, integers, doubles, and then you can see the type or the, the different entries that are present or the different levels, the new different kind of uh, values that are present in that particular variable. So this would be kind of, if it carried on, it's, it's kind of been truncated by the dots, but there'd be like 87 entries for each of these, apart from where you've got these NAs for missing values. Okay, so um, let me make the script a bit bigger again so we can see that. So let's talk about these data types that you can see there in the glimpse kind of the data summary. The ones that I'm mostly interested in for this video are character or CHR. That's a character or a string variable, so it's text. So it's it's presented as as strings often are in um, different high level interpretive programming languages. They're presented within quotes or double quotes, um, such as this. You can see the name Luke Skywalker is in double quotes. That's a character variable. We've also got int for int or integer, and that's the kind of that's the set of all integer values so those are round numbers the variables if a variable has int uh, as the data type it's it, all the values in that in that particular variable are 
round numbers essentially and then dbl it stands for double precision and that's that's a variable that's recording decimal or floating point numbers so the types of numbers we would need to do precise mathematical calculations but one thing to note with the three that we've covered here there is no there's no categorical variables shown in this kind of data summary here. this is where we've glimpsed it um, and those that clearly should be or ha are uh, character variables, um, categorical variables, have been import imported as, sorry, I'm going to have to change my script because I can, have been imported as character or string variables. So what we'd need to do is, I mean, a good example of this and the one we'll work with is this sex variable here. It's been imported as a string variable, as a character variable. And we've got male, we've got non. These are aliens, so there's male, there's non, there's female. Uh, there's a few others as well, and there's some missing values. But yeah, sex is generally going to be a categorical variable, um, as would species be or something like that. Uh, so we don't necessarily, to work with it, we're not necessarily going to want that as a string. We're going to want to convert that to a categorical variable or a factor. In, in R, it's often referred to it as a factor. So if we look at this particular variable, and the way we can select it is we can ask what class it is, and it's going to tell us at the moment that it's a character variable. And to do that, we can use this class function, this class method, where we, we type class, and then in parentheses, we specify the data frame that we want to look at, then a dollar symbol and the variable from that data frame. So what I'm saying here is uh, look at the sex variable from the Star Wars data frame. Tell me what the class is. And if we run this, if you look below in the command line, it's printed out that it's a character variable. We knew that anyway because we've got CHR in our data summary there. OK, another thing that'd be useful is we, we'd like to know, uh, we can't see all the data there in that table. We'd, maybe we'd like to know what the unique values are for that variable. So we can list those by in uh, get an output of those by using this unique method. So unique. Uh, you see there, if I hover near it, if I hover near it, you saw kind of it, it gave us a pop up as to as to the arguments that you need to include. So there's lots of different places you can get. Um, you can find guidance such as the documentation, there's help functions here. Um, but what we need to do here is, where, what I'm asking for is, I want to know what are the different levels, the new unique levels or values that are contained in the sex variable from the Star Wars data frame. Let me run that using Control and Enter. And you can see we've actually got, we've got five. We've got male, non, so I guess this is a species where there is no male or female female hermaphroditic and we've got na na is obviously missing data as well and note that it's not shown in in double quotes like the others are so it's not shown as string as the, like the others so it's just there's a blank space there there where there should be but at the moment it's kind of show it's shown as that there are those things are present so what we want to do is we want to convert these 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 unique values these are our these are our four uh, categories for sex for the, uh, in this particular data set so we want to convert this cat from a character variable to a, a categorical variable and the way we're going to do that is by we're going to uh, use this as dot factor uh, syntax that i've shown here so we're going to Select the Star Wars data frame and the sex variable. So Star Wars, the dollar sign, then sex. And then I've used the, the alt minus, this kind of less than minus um, assignment variable. And then I'm, I'm saying, I'm using this, giving this command, say as dot factor. And then I'm putting the, the data frame and the variable in the parentheses afterwards. So I could have changed the name here. So I could have, I could have done called this, let's say, Star Wars Sex One, something like that, giving it a different variable name, and it would have appended that to the end of the data frame. But what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm just going to overwrite the existing variable for sex variable and convert it to a factor or a categorical variable. So if I run that, uh, it's printed the command in the command line below and if I now run class, we can see it, is, it has been converted to a factor 
So it's now a categorical variable. And I can use this other command here at levels. So I've specified the variable and the data frame and asked what the levels are. The interesting thing is now that if I run that, it shows us the four levels, the four categories that exist in, within the sex variable in the Star Wars data set. Note it has, it's kind of dropped the uh, missing value. So it's, it, it recognizes that missing isn't a valid kind of category in this case. Okay, so that is, that's a, a kind of simple introduction to kind of, um, you know, you, in this case, we've got a data frame, we've not imported it, but um, we've loaded the data frame. And what we can see is that some of our variables are not the data types we would like them to be. So we've done a little bit of manipulation and converted some from strings to categorical variables, which would be better for some types of analysis. Um, and that's it's commonly the case when you with your own data sets as well when you import them say into R and you you try to work with them it's not always going to be the case that the correct data type will be recognised and you may have to do some manipulation of that data. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate another one as well. So we've shown her how to con convert a string variable to a categorical variable or a character um, to a categorical variable. Um, we. It might be the case, though, that sometimes you'd import some data. It isn't with this particular data set um, because all the numbers have been recognized as either, in, either integers or double precision numbers. Uh, but sometimes you might import a data set and find that what's clearly an integer or a decimal floating point kind of variable has been, it's been imported or it's shown as a string for some reason. Um, what you could do if that was the case is you can convert it to a numeric variable using this as numeric command. So I've just created a little pretend toy data set here or object, data object. So I'm call, creating a new object called data and I'm using the assignment operator. And what I'm assigning to that object is I'm using C, which stands for concatenate. You could, sit, you could if it's easy to remember, just think of it as combine and then in parentheses, I'm putting a list of the different uh, items that are going to be part of that object. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating an array or a vector of five items. But note here, they're numbers one, two, three, four, five. So we want them to be numeric, but I've put them in single quotes. So they're actually going to be recognized as strings or characters. So let me run that. What you can see here is in our environment, we, you've got the Star Wars data set where we, where we loaded it. Uh, but now that I've just created this data object and that's present there as well. And you can see it's a character and it's got these five, um, five elements to it. And if I run class on that data object, it's going to tell us what we already know that if we look down here that we've, it is a character uh, type of variable. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another object and call it nums for numbers. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to assign to numbers, um, I'm going to convert the, the data objects we created here with these strings as elements. I'm going to convert them to numeric variables. So I'm using this as dot numeric command. So here, here I'm using as dot numeric on the data object on, and I'm going to return it as a new item, a new object called nums. And that, what that should do is change these from strings, from character variables to, to, um, to numeric variables. And if we print nums, you can see it's printed the five items below here in the command line. And if you ask what class nums is now, you can see it's shown it as a numeric variable. OK, so um, again, this video was longer than I intended. Just a brief introduction to data types. I'm going to do another data types video, at least one more, I think, uh, going over. Because uh, uh, I've, only, I've only covered some of the data types here and also um, I've only come with, covered a couple of ways you can you can kind of like convert a variable from one data type to another data type if it's if it's possible to do so if it's a valid thing to do you obviously couldn't convert a, a word to a numeric variable it it throw back an error at you um, but that's it for this particular uh, video I will be back thanks for watching and listening and I will record another one very soon. Um, doing a bit more work with data types in R. Okay, thanks.